Hey guys, Hassan Wan back at it once again with a brand new video for you and welcome back to episode 2 of our MotoGP 15 career mode Let's Play. Okay, got a couple of things I need to talk about before we continue. First of all, I apologise for being a week out since my last episode. I've been working a crap ton of overtime at my actual job this past week, so I didn't really have very much time to record anything. Um, it's a bit of a grind recording sometimes, and, you know, trying to juggle this, a website, a blog, a podcast, other commitments, etc. So apologies for that. To make up for it, this should be a week of MotoGP. I've not done a week of series for quite a long time. Um, I think the last time I did one, I think, was Grid, where I did like seven episodes in seven days, um, which was actually a real difficult thing to do. Trust me, I was, I, that was... That was that was difficult, but I, I got there in the end. But it was very fun as well, so I can't really complain. Um, so yeah, here's the plan. I'm aiming to try and get five to seven episodes of this series out this week, and maybe even smash through the whole of Moto Three. That's the plan. We'll have to wait and see what happens. But hopefully, I can find the time to make it happen because I'm, I'm not as busy this week. So, second of all, just in case you guys are unaware. F1 2015 content will not be a thing when this game comes out on Friday. I just want to get it out there in advance. I probably, I will probably not be able to afford it right away. I think the earliest I can do it is July 22nd. Just a heads up, okay? Um, I apologize for not being able to get this out immediately, but you know, priorities and, and whatnot. Have kind of held me back in the way of this, really, and I'm. I'd like to think you guys are patient and understanding enough to be able to wait a little bit, and hopefully MotoGP can make up for it. But I, I do understand why, why there's an urge. You know, you want to see me make this content, so I apologise for the hold up on that. Hopefully, I can make it worth the wait. Okay, number three. You guys made your suggestions about the um, Draination Racing Colors on this on this Mahindra of mine. And uh, yeah, do you want to see the winning design? I have to give a shout out to two people here who kind of came up with the same suggestion. It was Danny Brennan and Thomas Parsley who came up with this idea of having basically having the old school McLaren um, livery on a bike. And I thought it actually looked really good on this thing. So here it is. It's my, my red and white um, Mahindra. I, I really think it looks fantastic, and I'm very happy with it. So I've, I've, got, I've got to give a shout-out to Kraken as well. He mentioned um, Jordan colors like yellow and black, and I thought that would have been really good too. Um, so props to Kraken as well, because he had a very good suggestion. I think it was second in, in the comes of overall votes. So... Props to Kraken. It was a it was a close run thing, but I thought the McLaren was a little bit nicer. So we'll go with the McLaren colours for now. And one more thing before we start. I, I had a feeling this was ha this, this would happen, and it did. You guys pretty much all begged me to up the difficulty. Shocker. Um so yeah. I'm up in it to hard. Mostly because you guys asked. Thanks a lot, guys. You, you, you're a bunch of masochists, and clearly you want to see me fail. So I'm more than happy to oblige. <laughs> um, it's weird, because right now, confidence-wise and gameplay-wise, I feel like I'm somewhere between medium and hard. I've never been a top-tier MotoGP player, if I'm honest with you. Um, like, if you want to see really high-level MotoGP 15 gameplay, I highly recommend two guys. Elusive Kev, who plays with Pro Physics and is a very, very good rider indeed. And NF Samuel, um, from uh, over, over on NF Gaming. He's arguably the fastest um, MotoGP player in the community. And he does excellent hot laps. He's, he does an excellent career mode and he's very, very knowledgeable. So if you haven't already, check both of those guys out. I'll put links to their channels in the description below. Um, they're both very, very good. Um, so check those guys out. I'm more of the knowledgeable, entertaining guy as opposed to the, you know, high-level gameplay kind of guy. But yeah, time for the opening round in the Moto3 Championship. And it's Qatar at the uh, famous Los Isle International Circuit. 
in and the outskirts of Doha. It's been around since 2000, and I think it's 2006 it's been around since. Um, it became the first MotoGP night race back in 2008. But yeah, look at this. It's the official Draination Garage, and it actually looks quite nice, actually. Um... If, if there's one thing I can applaud this game for, the customization does make it actually look like you own a factory team, which is pretty cool. Okay, so data packs. What are we going to work on first? Um, interesting they've changed it around now, so yeah, you need more upgrade points for the chassis and engine. Especially the engine. No surprise, given it's a Mahindra, the slowest of the uh, Moto3 bikes. But let's work on the chassis first of all, I think. Okay, cool. So, all right. First Moto3 race at hard difficulty. Let's see what happens. Miguel Oliveira on pole ahead of Fabio Quattararo and Jorge Navarro on the front row. Danny Kent in P4. Okay, here we go. The rise of draination racing. Let's see what happens. My, they say my aim is to get in the points. I think that should be doable. If Francesco Bagniaia can get, can get like top five on Mahindra, there's no reason why I can't, right? There's Nicky Io sliding on his knees like. <laughs> oh, there's Guevara. We're already up into 19. That's a good start. I'm channeling the power of Ayrton Senna. Only on two wheels. You know what's funny, though? This reminds me of playing PGR4. When uh, Ayrton Senna had his own bike in that game. It was really weird seeing Senna's name blasted in the side point of a motorcycle. Might try to see if I can find a picture of it or something. But I know a lot of guys have asked me for a review of this game. I know a lot of people are on the fence about buying it. So I'm going to give you the uh, down low on this as I uh, come down the inside of a couple of guys here. But yeah, this game is excellent. I've, I think I said it before in my first episode. But this this is the best bike game I think I've ever played. It's fantastic. The bikes, the bikes, the handed in model is way better than last year's. The, the, the bikes feel weightier. Like I said, you you can be more precise. It handles more realistically. Um. You can no longer just chuck the chuck the bike in everywhere and get away with it. It's not quite as simple as that now. And yeah, it just the game just feels a lot more, you know, refined in that regard. And you know, the bikes feel great, like I said. Um, the extra modes, like having the two strokes and the four strokes, are so good. Um, career mode looks like, 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 I think career mode, I've not really touched it very much of for obvious reasons, but it looks like it's just as good. Um, the whole private team aspect has probably added a whole new dimension to this career mode as well as you, you can ride for an official team, but you can create your own team too and race that. I'm looking forward to seeing how that one rolls out over time. You know, it's, it's a bit of a bummer the game doesn't play at 60 frames, like I said, um, unless you're on PC, which is kind of a shame. on the inside of Antonelli and Hanukkah. Can I I would say I'm doing quite well on this hard difficulty, but La Salle is one of my better tracks, so. Whoops. That's a half, that's a half second time penalty there. I'm going to try and go out of my way to avoid using the rewind if I can help it. 
But look, we're up to sixth place now. This is quite nice. It's like I can handle the hard difficulty. I got no confidence, brah. So I'm fighting with Binder and Mazbu. We, we won this very round in real life. But, yeah, like I said, the two strokes feel amazing to drive. Or, or to ride, I should say. The two strokes are so much fun. Like, they are just utterly amazing. The four strokes uh, as DLC are really fun too. We've got a whole bunch of classic riders and bikes in there as well. So if you're a, if you're a, if you're a bike nut, there's plenty to keep you interested. Yeah, overall this game is just fantastic. So overall, if you're on the fence, give it a shot. I've seen it go for like I've seen this game go for like 30 quid or, or under 30 quid already. Whoops. Oh, we went very wide there. But yeah, so I've already seen this game go for under 30 quid. It's a steal at that price. I'd pay 50 for this game. Dead serious. I think it's the best racing game on next gen, not named Forza Horizon 2. I think it's on that kind of level. I really do. This is just... Why is my Siri going off in the background? Um, <laughs> anyway, I say, like, this game is fantastic. It's, I say it's just, a, it, it's just about as good a, a bike game as it can be. I don't know how you can make this game better. Maybe only 60 frames would be the only way this game could really get up there. Because, you know, it, racing games... Just, just, just generally look better at 60 frames. I just do. I'm trying to get up to the back of Navarro here, but I don't think I'm going to get there. I'm going about the same pace as the leaders on a slower bike, which is a good sign. Well, if anyone asks, I will be up in the laps as well once I get to Moto2. I think I'll go up to 25%. Just hoping that half-second penalty doesn't come into play when I cross the line. Is that half a second? I don't know. That looks close to me. Let's wait and see. Vasquez takes the win. That's close. Uh, it, at worst, I think I've come in eighth. Let's see if the time penalty came into play. It did not. Um, so yeah, sixth place. I will keep my sixth. But that's a very good result. Top Mahindra in the field, which is which is a good sign. Danny Kent got the win on the photo finish. The, even though the game said Vasquez won. Typical, typical Moto3 time in there for you, folks. Danny Kent wins on a dead heat over Efren Vasquez and uh, Fabio Quattararo in third, Miguel Oliveira fourth, then Navarro fifth. Fun fact, if there is action... That's a weird glitch, though, because they've given Vasquez 25 points, but, they've, but Kent was shown to have won. That glitch is still a thing. Ah, uh, come on. Fi it's such a minor thing, Milestone. Fix that. Fun fact, in case you didn't know already as well, in the event of a tie in MotoGP, if even the photo can't split them, whoever sets the fastest lap in a race will be given credit for the win. So there is a way of splitting the tie in all this. Pretty crazy, huh? I I think the last time it happened, I think, was the Saxon Ring. Why is this game saying I finished in eighth? Ugh, whatever. I think it was Hector Faubel and Johan Zarco. I'm sure you know the name Johan Zarco if you're a Moto2 fan out there. Because he's dominating that championship at the moment. But, uh, yeah, on the whole... Um... 
Yeah, it, it, was, it was a Saxon ring race. They came over the line at the same time. 0. 0.000 between them to three decimal places. The photo couldn't split them either, but because Hector, I think because Hector Falbell set the faster of the uh, set the faster lap in the middle of the race, they gave Falbell the win. Uh, I think that's a little bit unfair, to be honest, as a rule, because I feel like well, the average speed was exactly the same. Just because one guy peaked a little bit at one point doesn't mean he should be given credit for the win. I mean, I say you split it. Give them both 22 and a half points each. But, hey, that's just me. Um, the Tribe of Dre is back. 23,000 fans. I got some I got some good GP credits as well on that one, I think. I'm up to 47,500. Um, I don't know if I'm, whether I want to upgrade my bike straight away in terms of just sheer development. Or... What I do is, you know, I just I save up for a better bike. Like, I save up for the KTM or the Honda. Because the Honda's 170k. So I'm going to be quite a way away from getting that bike. But we'll have to wait and see. I may, may, I'll also have to wait and see if there's a... Uh, if there's any better offers to, dr to drive for an official team at some point. But yeah, let's go to round two. And we're going to Austin for the Circuit of the Americas. As I said before, one of my favourite tracks in the entire game. Um, one of my favourite tracks in the world, actually, because I think it's one of the very few places that works as a bike track and a car track. Um, and hey, it's the only race Mark Marquez has won this season. I know people are going to want me to talk about this at some point and how the season has played out so far. It's been amazing, like, seeing how much Honda as a... Not, not Marquez, because you know what? Marquez doesn't have to prove himself to anybody. We know how good Marquez is. Um, still glitchy. Like, seriously, hang on one second. I have one data pack here. It has me down as 8th in the championship, even though the timing screen said I finished in 6th. Okay, whatever. Doesn't make any sense. Okay, Austin. Let's go. But yeah, talking about that, yeah, like it's, it's it's amazing seeing how much Honda has struggled, and a lot of people have tried to pin it on certain things. I know the 2015 Honda engine has not gone down well in Marquez's camp in the sense of, well... They say it's very punchy, it's too aggressive, and it can't it can't let Marquez do what he wants to do with the bike, which is engine brake, you know, get the front get the you know, get the back wheel in the air, endo it into the corners a little bit, and you know, be really aggressive and get that lean angle all the way in like Marquez likes it so much. And you know, a lot of it I think is also down to the fact that Yamaha and Ducati have improved, especially Yamaha. Now they've finally got seamless downshift gearboxes to play with um, as well. And just seeing, you know, I mean, Yamaha have won all but one race this season. That's terrifying. Like, it's almost as crazy as Marquez winning the first 10 rounds of the season last year. And then going on to win 13 in total. I mean, by the time we got to Bruno, where he, the first race he didn't win last season, the season was already wrapped up. He already had like an 80-point championship lead. It was over before it even really got started. Uh, chassis, data pack. Yep, so that, okay, I'm going to have a level 1 chassis now with the bike, which is, should be quite nice. Okay. We'll go around Austin now, but... Yeah, it's had a knock-on effect on Marquez, and Marquez has said before he's not going to change his riding style um, just because the bike's not feeling great. And I, I, I agree with that mantra. Why change your Why change your style when you know what you used to have clearly works so well? So I, I totally understand that way of looking at it too. So yeah, on the whole, I feel bad for Marquez because, like I said, he we know how good he is, and we know it's not on him. It, it, we all know it's way more to do with the bike. Um, and, you know, Marquez has already proven himself to be a tremendously talented rider. But the, the most naturally gifted rider I think we've ever seen in this sport. Whoop. Bit of a minor cut there, but the game is much harsher on corner cuts this year. 
on the whole, yeah, I hope Marquez can bounce back. I mean, Aston was a good sign. It was nice to see Marquez back up the top and fighting for the win where he deserved to be. Very nit. Oh, well, I'm going to rewind that because I think I'm going to get a, a, a warning for corner cut in there. But yeah, like, and if, I think, honestly, the bike has had a knock-on effect on guys like Crutchlow and Redding, who are also on the same bike this year. And I mean, Crutchlow is not doing too badly, but I think Crutchlow is, has thrown away a lot of easy points from crashing this year, and Redding is really struggling. Like, honestly, I think if you, if, if you, if you gave Scott the chance to ride his production bike from last year, I think he'd take it. <laughs> he was better on that bike, and I think that's a terrifying and scary thought that he's gone from the production Honda to the full-blown factory mas machine and uh, as a result he's looked like he's actually worse and less comfortable out there I feel bad for Scotty yeah like he, he's a very very good rider he deserves it I mean he's in the same ballpark as Polar Spagaro and Polar Spagaro has been really struggling this year um, as well, I mean, Bradley Smith at the moment has, has uh, improved tremendously so far this season compared to this time last year where his job was on the line. He's he looks a lot more comfortable this year, and I'm very glad he, do, he he he's looking so good because he's a very good rider, Bradley. He's just never had top machinery to really show how good he a rider he really is. Also, I think the game has actually fixed the glitch last year where all the riders seem to be really struggling um, around the circuit of the Americas and you could really win easily around here if you knew what you were doing. I can take turn two flat. That's quite, that's quite handy to know. Whoa. Got the break in a bit wrong there. Got away with it. Isaac Vinales next up. Hanukkah. Like, they, they've made Hanukkah too good. <laughs> Hanukkah is not a top eight runner consistently. He is not. And neither is Masby right now. Some performance glitches need to be fixed. For example... Why is Scott Reddin's rating in the game so bad when he's on the exact same bike as Crutchlow? <laughs> that I do not understand. <laughs> like, Crutchlow has got a rating right near the top and, and Scott Reddin's is almost like a midfield. Like, it, it doesn't make any sense given they're on the same bike. <laughs> got a breaking wrong for that hairpin. Again, got away with it. You know, I think I've got the pace to chance for the win here, but but I think the guys up front are just a little bit more bulletproof than me. But we we'll have to wait and see. This bike, it feels good, though. Missed the apex there. That's better. As Kenton leads from Quattararo over the line for the final lap. I think I would gladly take a solid six. I'm only about a tenth slower than Danny Kenton up the front, though, so... I am on the leader's pace, which is good. I'm kind of now banking on maybe a crash up front in the top four because, you know, there are random crashes in this mode now that riders will crash more often off their own accord. So, you know, so if somebody in the comments in episode one was asking me about that. Yes, it does happen. Like we saw with Navarro in the, uh, the Valencia wildcard event last season. But, you know, isn't it nice seeing Valentino Rossi challenge for another championship? Oh, shit. Chance of a podium here. Hello. 
piss off Oliveira. <laughs> but yeah, it's nice seeing Rossi challenge again for a... Uh, I've never been the biggest Valentino fan, but I have tremendous respect for him as a rider. See if this toe can work. Let's work it a little bit. Oh, well, they both went wide. Hello. Come on, let's get that podium. Whoa, 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 whoa! I'm not, I'm not playing with a penalty. That, that, that's my bad. That's my bad. Sorry. That was an ideal lever. <laughs> Different line. That's the Felipe Massa line, I like to call that. Anyone who saw the British Grand Prix when he was leading yesterday will know what I'm talking about. Just gonna try and hang on so I can get this podium. Kent and Quattararo fighting for the win. I think Quattararo is gonna get it here. Or is Kent gonna put on a last second corner? Last corner move. Damn it, I did it again. Jesus. That cut is not worth nine tenths. I don't care what anyone tells me. Who's going to win up front? I think it's going to be Kent. It's Quattararo that's taken the win, but we get a first podium at the Circuit of the Americas. All right. <laughs> That will do nicely. And Kent got the win. Is that going to be another photo finish glitch? Oh boy. But yay, third. That will do very nicely indeed. And once again, Kent has been glitched into second place. Danny Kent is getting screwed out here. More credits. Up to 66,000 already. That's, 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 that's a very nice number. If we can keep this going, we'll get we'll be able to, to be using those top-level Hondas in no time. This third yeah, this Mahindra is quick. But yay, look at that. First podium. And the 16 points could be crucial. I mean, interviewed by a guy that looks like Matt Roberts. <laughs> That will do very nicely indeed. But I think that'll just about do it for this episode as well, as a matter of fact. But I um, hope you guys enjoyed it very much. Um, if you guys want any topics you'd like me to talk about in a future episode, feel free. I'd love to be able to talk some more in-depth Moto GP, Moto 2 or Moto 3. Maybe even some World Superbikes now and again, because I've been getting back into that this season. And uh, don't, forget to check, don't forget to check out my show on uh, Downforce Radio as well, Bike Live, every Friday night at 8 p.m. on Downforce. Check it out if you haven't already. Me, Lewis Sutherby, and Rebecca James talking all about BSB, WSB, MotoGP, and even some MXGP and Speedway if you're into that kind of thing as well. So if you're into that, feel free to feel free to, to uh, follow along as well on Downforce as well. But until next time, I've been Harrison101. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll catch you guys next time. Sayonara.